In this video, we are going to talk about remote access to your Blue Iris server. So on your phone or on your computer, whether you're inside your house or place of business or outside, what are your options? Now this topic quickly turns into a topic about security because anytime you expose your network to the outside world, you are putting your network, your internal devices, phones, computers, at risk. Now, how much risk are you putting them at um, is debatable. There's really three ways you can get to your cameras and to Blue Iris outside of your home or business. The first one is traditional port forwarding. What port forwarding is, is you actually open up a port on your firewall that says if someone from the outside world tries to hit this port on my public IP address, which is what your internet service provider assigns to you, forward that request onto this internal device on such and such port. So it's taking traffic from the outside, passing it through what normally is a firewall, well, it's still firewall, but what normally is blocked by the firewall to the device. Now you're relying on that device, in this case, a, the Blue Iris web server to be security patched and not be vulnerable to someone hitting that device from the outside and being able to compromise it. So a lot of folks in this surveillance and security world uh, frown upon port forwarding. Now port forwarding is done for a variety of reasons. If you've ever played uh, Xbox or uh, PlayStation, you might have had to port forward for certain things. Um, or if you've had other cameras like an Amcrest network video recorder, you have to port forward to be able to get into that. So there's other reasons why you might have to uh, do port forwarding. Again, it's a topic for discussion and depending on who you talk to, the amount of risk uh, changes. In my personal risk profile, what I'm comfortable with, I don't use port forwarding. So we'll talk about some of the other options. Another option you could use is a VPN. And a VPN allows you to, through your router, make a secure connection into your network. And then once you're internal to your network, that connection secured, you then have access to your Blue Iris system. This does require a little bit of work. Your router has to be able to support a VPN server to allow for you as the client to log in. Um, generally, it's called an L2TP connection. Um, it's one of the common ones. There's others. But essentially, you would take your phone or your laptop and you would have a network connection that you would connect to. You'd say connect and you would connect to your, your home network. So your traffic would actually be routed to your home or business network, I should say. In my case, it's home network. And that's a great option. That's an option I used for years. Um, and then you can not only get to Blue Iris, but you can get to other things. So if you had a network with attached storage or some other device that you wanted to get to, you could get to that as well once you're on with a VPN. The third option I recommend is something called Zero Tier. Now, Zero Tier isn't something that everyone's heard of. It's a secure way without having to do what I said on your firewall, set up a VPN. Maybe you have a firewall that doesn't support that. You can still use Zero Tier to securely get into your network and to your Blue Iris machine. How it works is you go to the Zero Tier website, you set up for free, um, kind of a virtual network, and you add your Blue Iris machine and any of your endpoints, your devices, that you want to be able to connect back to the Blue Iris machine. This is a bit of a tangent, but some people do say, well, you're entrusting zero tier with management of your network. You can actually run your own zero tier is open source. You can actually run your own zero tier servers. If you, your threat, your uh, risk threat profile is that high. Um, you can run your own zero tier servers for the most of us. Uh, this will be fine to use zero tier as is uh, through, through their servers. So just like having a VPN, Anytime you want to connect back to your Blue Iris, you will have to open up the Zero Tier app if you're on your phone. Um, on your computer, it, it'll stay running pretty much all the time if you wanted to. And it's gotten better on the iOS and Android apps where it will stay running if you want it to. Um, earlier on, a year or two ago, when I first started playing with Zero Tier, it would disconnect pretty quickly and you'd have to go back in and reconnect to go in and, and see your cameras. 
Just to be clear, zero tier does not require you to port forward on your router. The way the technology works is it uses outbound connections to establish inbound connections. Um, so you really don't have to touch your router at all. There's, there's no need to touch your router. You could set up your router to be a zero tier endpoint, but um, for what we're talking about today, it would be you would set it up on the Blue Iris machine, configure it in the Blue Iris software, and then set it up on your devices, your endpoints. I do have a video on setting up zero tier. You'll see it at the top, and also I'll put it in the description below. Um, it's really not that difficult to set up, but it, there are a few steps to take. Now that we've talked about some of the options, let's click over to Blue Iris and the lovely frozen butterfly. And we are going to go over to the web server section. So if we go up here, there's a little gear icon, click on the gear icon. These are the settings that'll pop up and you're gonna to wanna to click on web server. If your Blue Iris PC is connected to the internet, you'll see an external IP address. This is the IP address that others see when you visit a website. Um, this is the IP address that your ISP or internet service provider has given to you. I have removed that for now, just so um, others don't see that, but your yours will populate here. You'll also see the internal IP address on your network. So if you're in the LAN, the local area network, this is the IP address you would hit. My personal preference is to not use port 81. It's a very common port. I usually will pick a high number port, like 50,000 plus, and use that. Whether it gives you more security is debatable. Um, but pretty much everyone knows port 80, 81, 443. These are very common ports for servers. So um, choosing a random port, aside from a full port scan, security through obscurity, go figure. There is a nice remote access wizard here that if you are doing port forwarding, it'll try to even use uh, UPnP, which is basically a protocol that will communicate with your router directly and try to add those port forwarding rules without you even having to log into your router. Um, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. If UPnP is on on your router, then it might, but you should really not have that on all the time on your router if you do. Um, just helpful hint. It's, it's not a, from, from a security perspective, you should turn off UPnP when you see that, uh, those, those four letters turn them off. But if you don't, it'll run through, but it'll also check to see if you have connectivity, um, both out to the internet and back in from the internet. So if you go and make the port forwarding rule and you want to say, see if blue iris is going to work before you've downloaded the app and paid $10 on the app store, um, you can run through this remote access wizard and see. Now, if you are going to use a VPN or you're going to use zero tier, then the external um, IP is not as important. Um, really, the internal IP is going to be as important. If we click on the adapters here, you have the local host. Um, don't worry about that for now. But if you are using VPN and you're going to actually VPN into your network, well, you're going to get a local IP address for your device. So for your phone, you're going to be on this same. So maybe I'll get a 192.168.4.200 address. And when I go into Blue Iris, it's going to visit this other local address now that I'm on the network and VPN didn't. So I'm really not going to need to know anything about this remote uh, WAN, which is the wide area network um, information. I'm just going to need to know about the, the local area network, the LAN, if I'm VPN. Now, if I'm using zero tier, I'm also going to have another adapter and your if your pc if you you know have multiple LAN cards or um, ethernet cards and so you, you may see other adapters here but there will be if you set up zero tier you will see an adapter an additional adapter that you'll select but if you um uncheck bind exclusively when you're home on or at work on the local network you can use you don't have to use zero tier. You can go directly to the IP address. When you leave, you can go to the zero tier address. Again, still not touching the WAN address, your public IP. Um, so, so that's a pretty cool feature. When I first experienced zero tier, I thought you, even when I was home, I had to go into zero tier because there is a little bit of a lag to when you turn on zero tier in an app, 
Um, it's got to connect to the zero tier server. And, you know, so, so if you, you get an alert from Blue Iris, and somebody's in your driveway and you want to open it up quick um, and you're not already logged into zero tier, it can be a little bit annoying. So, but th this allows you, if you're home, to be able to use the local IP address that's not zero tier, um, but also have the zero tier adapter selected. So just make sure that bind exclusively is unchecked and you'll be able to use both of them. If we click into advanced, there are some additional options. R remember, this is a web server that is intended to be quote unquote out on the internet. I would make sure that require authentication. So username and password is um, on for all connections, including internal. Um, and also you could set up that if you knew you always had a, uh, and I, another location, for example, another site that needed to connect in, and that's the only, those are the only people that needed to connect. You could, you could limit it by that IP address. Um, but if you're out and about in the world, um, on cell phone towers, you're going to get new IPs all the time. You won't be able to put that in there. So it's not exactly easy. Um, these are all the defaults auto bands. So if someone is trying, if you do have that port forwarded and someone is trying to get into the network and they're failing, 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 you can, um, ban their IP. I personally like to log all connections. Just if there was ever an issue, I could go see who connected when, especially if you have a larger network. Hopefully that was helpful. If you are interested in that zero tier video, I will put it up above and also in the description below. Again, that is what I use. I've started with port forwarding, decided it was too insecure, then moved to VPN and then learned about zero tier at this point a couple of years ago. And uh, I've used zero tier for more than just blue hours. It's, it's really an incredible, incredible uh, uh, invention. So I, I hope the folks over there keep developing on it. And um, if you haven't played with it yet, definitely check it out anyway. We'll see you in the next video. If you found this helpful, uh, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Take care.